Bishop Daniel Delaney was born in February 1747 in the townland of Paddock in the southern Midlands of Ireland. His parents were Daniel and Elizabeth, both of whom came from old and influential families of the area. Compared to many other families of the time, Bishop Daniels was reasonably well off. Young Daniel was born into very hard times in Ireland. In the 1600s, Ireland had been invaded by British forces under the leadership of an Oliver Cromwell. Hundreds of thousands of Irish people were killed or were sent off into slavery. In 1740 to 1741, just a few years before Daniel's birth, a mini ice age caused a famine in Ireland and around 38% of the population died as a result. But what impacted mostly on Daniel in his life was the fact that all of Ireland was under British rule and had been since English Protestant King Henry VIII in 1542 was declared King of Ireland. By 1695, the English King and his parliaments introduced the penal laws into both Ireland and England. In short, these penal laws restricted the freedoms of any person who was not a member of the Church of England. For example, Catholics, Presbyterians and Jews in both England and Ireland were not permitted to own land. They were not permitted to own weapons or horses valued over five pounds. They were not permitted to be parliamentarians or even to vote. They were not permitted to set up schools or colleges, nor were they allowed to go overseas to study. The immediate impact of these penal laws on young Daniel was in respect to his education. Catholics were allowed to discreetly celebrate the sacraments, but making a show of them in any way could bring severe punishment. Catholics were not allowed to establish their own schools in any public way, so they set up what became known as head schools. A teacher with ten or so students hidden away behind a hedge or in a secluded location. This system made obtaining a thorough education difficult. But Daniel had much more serious difficulties in his life. Before he turned 10, his father died. And as a result, Daniel had to live with an aunt so his mother could give all her attention to his brother John, who was very sickly. Despite this close attention, John died before Daniel's 16th birthday. While living with his aunt in the town of Mount Rath, just a few kilometres from his home in Paddock, Daniel made up his mind that he wanted to be a priest. A beggar that Daniel had helped actually predicted that Daniel would wear a mitre. He would become a bishop. This meant that Daniel had to be smuggled off to Europe to complete his studies for the priesthood. In 1763, at the age of 16, Daniel left Ireland for Paris. In 1771, he was ordained a priest, and then for six years he taught in a college in France. In 1777, he returned to Ireland. He was 30, and had been away from his mother and country for 14 years. When he returned, he was so shocked with what he saw that he wanted to return to France. His mother persuaded him to stay. He had forgotten how bad things were in Ireland, how poor the poor were, how much violence there was, how ignorant people were, ignorant of the world, and ignorant of their Catholic faith. For many months in his parish of Tullow, he tried to bring his people back to God through his preaching, and he was an excellent preacher. He would personally intervene 
where fighting and gambling were taking place. These measures did not seem to work, so then he visited the homes and tried to get the mothers and wives to help him to bring peace and God back into the lives of the Catholics in Tullow. But again, this seemed to achieve very little. Then one day in 1778, when walking the streets of Tullow, praying for God's inspiration, he came across a group of children playing and singing, and he realised that perhaps the children were his way to the hearts and souls of his parishioners. He would start up a Sunday school program for the children, making the school especially appealing to the children through their love of music and play. Father Delaney was lucky at this time, as the penal laws were very poorly enforced, and as long as he kept a low profile as possible, he could escape imprisonment and or a fine. The Sunday School program eventually became a great success. Father Delaney formed choirs, a whistle band, and several different classes of religious education. The children's enthusiasm for the classes began to draw in the adults to see what was happening, and many of them stayed for classes. And some of the people volunteered to be trained by Father Delaney as instructors. Within two years, two monumental events took place. In 1782, the penal law, which prevented Catholics from opening educational institutions, was abolished. And in 1783, the beggar's prediction came true, and Father Delaney became Bishop Delaney. Immediately the restriction was lifted on Catholic education, Bishop Delaney began planning the building of a college to enable young Irish Catholic men to study for the priesthood. This was Carlo College and it opened in 1793. It was the first of its kind in Ireland for hundreds of years. From this college, thousands of newly ordained priests travelled around the world as missionaries. One such priest was Father John Terry who played a major role in the establishment of the Catholic Church in New South Wales. The college still exists today. As soon as he was made a bishop, and with the restrictions on Catholic education lifted, Bishop Delaney could minister to his people much more openly. He continued to train people as religious instruction teachers and he sent them to all parts of his diocese to minister to the children and the adults there. His big hope was to establish a special group of women and men to be his main educators, to run the Sunday school programs and to open and administer day schools. Two hundred and seven years ago, on the 1st of February, 1807, he established the Sisters of St. Bridget, or the Bridgetine Sisters. And one year and one day later, on the 2nd of February, 1808, the Bishop established the Brothers of St. Patrick, or the Patrician Brothers. Immediately, both groups opened day schools in Tullow and then a couple of years later in the town of Mount Rath, just a few kilometres from where Bishop Delaney was born and raised. Four years after he founded the Patrician Brothers, Bishop Delaney's health started to fail him, and in 1813 the Brigidine sisters were so worried about his condition that they brought him into their convent so that they could look after him. Despite his illness, which became very serious, he remained active in his diocese, writing letters to priests and bishops alike, visiting people, and even, just days before his death, being the main celebrant in his famous and well-attended 
Corpus Christi procession in Tullow. His last days were spent in much pain, but he never complained. He died in the early hours of the 9th of July, 1814, during Mass. Around his bed were Brigidine daughters and patrician sons, and his personal friends Judith Wogan Brown and Archbishop Troy of Dublin. From Tullow, a somewhat insignificant Irish country town, Bishop Daniel Delaney's hope of an education for all was, through his Carlow College and his Brigidines and Patricians, able to reach out all over Southern Ireland and then across the waters to the United States, to India, to Australia and New Zealand, to England and to Kenya, to Papua New Guinea and Ghana, to South Sudan and China. No Irish-born bishop, before or after Bishop Delaney, has had such an international impact on Catholic school education, both religious and secular.